What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap. Today we'll talk a bit about subscription hell, but I'd like to go beyond that and talk about how to decide whether or not to subscribe to something. So there's a ton of media articles out there and also YouTube videos as well that discuss about this problem of just having way too many subscriptions. Um, the term that I've seen out there is subscription hell. A 2022 survey by CNR Research found that the average American has about $219 a month in subscriptions. That's over $2,600 a year. As we can see here, there's a wide variety of categories, things that people are subscribing to. These don't add up to 100, obviously. This is because people can have uh, subscriptions to multiple items, which is part of the compounding of the problem. But anyway, so there's a bunch of different categories and I'd like to sort of group them and focus on the following three. First, we'll talk about subscriptions so that we can stream media. So this is going to be kind of the classic thing that you think about with subscriptions. Next, we'll quickly talk about subscriptions for goods, such as loot boxes. And finally, and this is a little different, but I think you'll see the analog, we'll talk about cars and homes as well. So it should be no surprise that streaming was by far the number one category, with 90% of survey respondents saying that they subscribe to a streaming service. Which streaming services? Well, if we look at a separate survey from Forbes Advisor, we can see some of the popular subscriptions with Netflix at the top. Now, years ago, Netflix was the undisputed king of streaming. They had everything. But what's happened since then is that parties have gone off and created their own streaming services and have pulled their content with them. The market's become fragmented and you can't find everything in one place anymore. And when we think about it, what we're really doing here is we're subscribing for access to a catalog. Each catalog only has so much fresh content that's coming out at any given time and any given month. Way back when, paying $12 to have uh, Netflix with no ads and basically all the content you could possibly want uh, was a pretty incredible deal. But now, if you wanted access to the same catalog, essentially, you'd have to pay $50, $60 a month to subscribe to all these different services. And that, well, that's just not nearly as good of a deal. In fact, I think it would be pretty dumb. And the reason for that is, again, there's only so much fresh content that's going to come out. I'm not the type of guy that watches uh, reruns all the time, with very few exceptions. I don't want to waste time watching something I've already enjoyed before and I'd like to discover something new. So my solution for this is to rotate platforms. I'll subscribe to Netflix for a month, enjoy everything that there is on it, catch up on things. I'll actually cancel it basically a day or two after I've signed up for the month so that I can continue the subscription for a month, but I no longer have to worry about canceling it. Once that subscription's run through, I've probably enjoyed basically everything I would have wanted to, and I'll sign up for a different service like HBO Max or something like that. This way, I don't end up with any underutilized subscriptions, but I still end up watching everything that I'd want to watch. Kind of a side note, unnecessary detail, but personally, I find Disney Plus and Hulu to have very little content that I'm interested. Disney Plus, basically zero. And for Hulu, basically just the movies. So really, my rotation is more about Netflix and Apple Plus and HBO. And to fill in the gaps, of course, I watch a ton of YouTube. So how about music streaming? Well, here it's a little bit different. So uh, going back to the whole reruns thing, uh, we need to think about cost per use. Now, again, for streaming stuff like video, um, there's really very little replayability for me, except for, you know, some things that, um, some very, very rare exceptions. One of those is the movie The Big Short. I bought the digital copy of that from Google because I watched that at least once or twice a year. It's one of the few movies that I really just really enjoy watching off and on again. But for the most part, that's not the case for TV shows and movies. But there's a ton of replayability for music. So that's why on a cost per use basis, it makes a lot more sense for me to go out and buy a uh, MP3 or an M4A from iTunes. I know that's becoming very, very rare these days, but there are a couple of reasons. I'll be able to enjoy all of these songs for free without having to subscribe to any individual platform in the future for however long I want. And second, and this might be even more important than anything for me, is the quality of the file. So most streaming platforms, the audio quality that you can stream just really isn't all that good. And especially 
if we're streaming from a device to another device using Bluetooth, then the quality is reduced even further. Well, these days, I think people are just so used to streaming um, compressed Bluetooth files that they can't tell the difference. Um, but, you know, for those of us that um, you know, didn't grow up that way or are used to um, having higher quality audio and better systems, um, it just doesn't cut the mustard. Uh, except for Tidal, they have a, a high quality streaming thing. I think um, Cubuzz, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, might as well. Uh, but for me, the best deal is to use the free ad supported tiers for Spotify or Pandora or something, uh, even YouTube maybe, though I don't really like that platform as much, to discover new music and find songs that I really like. And then if I have a song that I really, really like, then I'll go and buy it, and then I'll be able to play that whenever I want, when I'm traveling, and then also in my car. And that's a really big one, is um, playing music off of the solid state drive in my Tesla. Sounds way, way better. Absolutely no comparison uh, to anything you can do on Bluetooth over the phone or using the, the in-car software as well, again, except for Tidal, um, but then you can have only a limited number of songs that you can download on Wi-Fi onto the drive. So that's my thinking on media subscriptions. Oh, and how about things like Audible or, um, I don't know, books and stuff like that. Well, here, I think it's pretty silly to be spending money on any of these when you can get access to a huge catalog using your local library. So I went to my local library, got a card, um, hooked it up to the Libby app and I can um, get audiobooks and read books and have them sent to my Kindle. I'm probably going to hit the pool after this and go read one of the books that I borrowed from the library on my Kindle. And um, so yeah, there's no reason to pay for any of that stuff. Next one's a quick one. This is good subscriptions. So things like loot boxes. Think of those things where, I don't know, they give you like a box of different clothes once a month or um, there's bark box where you get different toys and, and treats as well for your pets. Um, I think there's one for like cheese and stuff too. And I don't think we need to say too much about these. These are pretty silly. You're gonna end up with a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily love because it's, it's curated by someone else and curated also at cost <laughs> so that they make a margin. Whereas just going out and buying the stuff that we actually like and need, um, that's gonna be way more cost effective. So I think enough said there. Now we'll go to the final topic, which is a little bit different, but I think that there's very much kind of an analog there, or not even an analog, but we can apply the same kind of thinking to them, and that's for cars and homes. So true, most subscriptions are a monthly deal where you can cancel at any time and it'll end at the end of the subscription period. Well, there are some subscriptions though where you can subscribe for a full year in advance, um, things like VPN services, and then also I think Amazon Prime has something like that, doesn't it? Obviously, I don't use Prime very much. I just do the free trials for like $2 every now and then in order to watch, you know, a few shows and then move on. Anyway, so once you're looking at a one-year subscription, it's not all that different from thinking about rent or um, if we stretch it out a little bit further to two years to a lease. Either way, what we're doing is we're basically um, paying for access to something, and then at the end of the period, we lose access to that, and we're left with nothing tangible. We could do full episodes on leasing versus buying cars, and then a full episode as well on buying versus renting a home, but we'll just kind of do um, a quick little overview here of some of the ideas on how to think about it. So again, going back to cost per use, obviously the longer that we're gonna keep these assets, then the more it makes sense to buy them rather than renting them. In terms of cars, ahead of the pandemic, about one third um, a little bit less than a third of Americans would lease a car. This has fallen substantially to more like around one in five because of market dynamics. But in general, if you're going to keep a car for a long time, it makes a heck of a lot more sense to buy the vehicle rather than lease it. And even more sense in most markets, we've had some weird stuff going on with the pandemic, but even more sense to buy a car that has already taken a big chunk of the depreciation hit by buying a used vehicle instead. All that depreciation is built into the lease. Another problem with leasing is that buyers tend to buy sort of stretch brands. Um, they're buying cars that are new, that have all these sort of, um, you know, warranties and service packages in the lease, so that they're buying a lot of peace of mind in that way. But they're also getting cars that might be um, not as affordable for them, where they to go out and buy them. According to some data I found, the top four leased makes were BMW, Audi, Land Rover, and Mercedes. For houses, the math is really much more complicated and uh, it's gonna really depend. But again, a major one is gonna be how long we're going to be staying in the home. A recent video I did talks about the state of the US housing market. And near the end of the video, I do talk about the rent versus buy decision a little bit. But to summarize, um, Americans seem to really have a 
too many subscriptions that are underutilized and um, I think it's a really great place with low hanging fruit where we can take a look at these subscriptions, see if it really makes sense um, given the value that they bring to us and we can trim our budget and effectuate some savings very quickly. So hopefully you found that helpful, got you thinking a little bit. If it did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.